Hello everyone, and welcome back to the British Royal Fanatic Podcast. I'm Hayden, your American friend with a passion for British royal history. If you enjoy royal media in addition to current events and history within the British royal family, then you have found your home. And if you could, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon down below so you can stay up to date on all things happening here on the channel. King Charles III's coronation. It's on everybody's mind. It's what a lot of media outlets are discussing, speculating. Twitter is still ablaze about the King's coming coronation. We don't know too much right now. They, of course, released little tidbits of information, but there's enough that we do know that has caused some uproar in feelings. There are things that are staying the same, but things are changing which are reflecting King Charles's view of a slimmed down, more modern monarchy, which seems to be the trend in all European monarchies right now. These changes to a centuries-old ceremony and centuries-old tradition have a lot of people you know, kind of mixed feelings. They're, they don't know really what to feel. Some people are indifferent. People are welcoming the changes. Other people are starkly against them. There's a lot of speculation and rumor going on right now about what little we know about this coming coronation. Today, we're going to discuss what we do know, what's changing, and how people are feeling. But before we do get into it, I have one question to ask you. Do you think that they will replace the Corinor diamond in the consort's crown? Will they go through with it, or will they actually leave it? Let me know down below. First things first, what is a coronation? Why is it significant? Well, of course, over here in America, we do not have a monarchy at all, not even a constitutional monarchy. We have a democratic republic. So the only ceremony that is equivalent to a coronation is what we have with every election of a new president. Every four years, the inauguration ceremony where it's before a large crowd. There's representatives of the government there. There's a swearing in and an oath taken. And the whomever is now the president you know says before you all sets their goals makes uh and bada bing bada boom you are now president and on we go the coronation is something that's more serious than that the coronation not only is a big ceremony with pageantry tradition lots of glitz and glamour but it's also a very solemn ceremony that's very serious it's deeply rooted in traditions within not only the british government but the church of england and other traditions within the british monarchy it is very serious it has relatively been unchanged for the past thousand years it has taken place in the westminster abbey for the past 900 years it has essentially the epitome of tradition within it. It is a hugely serious ceremony. The big point of the ceremony is that the new sovereign and potentially their consort is anointed and crowned. Yes, there is Ascension Day, which not only marks that a new sovereign has ascended to the throne, but also it is the you know, death of the previous sovereign. As the saying goes, there's always a head that wears the crown in the British monarchy. So this is a lot of the steps early on we've we've already lived through. Ascension Day, meeting of the Ascension Council, those two meetings, signing of the proclamations, oaths being taken, speeches being made, the proclamation being read aloud, King Charles officially being proclaimed and declared, this is our new sovereign, and so on and so forth. But there is one last step, and it is the coronation. Now, we haven't had a coronation especially to the size and pressure in 70 years. The last one, of course, was coordinated was Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. So there's a lot of pressure on this coronation. But what do we know concretely for sure? First thing, the date. May 6, 2023 is the date for King Charles's coronation. It is on a Saturday. And more than likely, there will not be a bank holiday because it, it already being on a Saturday. But that's only time will tell other things that we know concretely it is taking place in westminster abbey the archbishop of canterbury is presiding over the event his grace the duke of norfolk the 18th duke of norfolk is the one who is organizing the event he has been incredibly important not only with operation spring tide but it is the responsibility of the duke of norfolk the dukedom of norfolk is the highest and most prestigious dukedom in the united kingdom and subsequently the dukes of norfolk have been organizing and leading 
the behind the scenes of the coronations for the past few centuries. So we have some traditions there. Camilla is to be queen, queen consort. The Golden State coach is going to be making an appearance as well. And the traditional regalia will be worn and used, such as the coronation chair. This more than likely the Stone of Destiny will make its way back from Scotland. We have St. Edward's crown. We have the orb and scepter, the sword, the gauntlets, the ring, the robes. There's a lot of traditional items that will be there. And the main parts of the coronation will still be observed. Those six parts being the recognition, the oath, the anointing, the investiture, which then includes the crowning, the enthronement, and the homage. So there's a lot already there that is still set in stone, but there's a lot that's going to be changing. And this is where people start to have their own opinions. So the very first thing that is changing is the time frame. The time frame is going to be shortened. The actual ceremony itself is going to be shortened. When Queen Elizabeth II was coronated, her ceremony lasted about three hours, three, three and a half. I've heard somewhere actually was upwards close to four. And that's from the start of this doesn't include processions in processions out, everybody arriving. This is truly the ceremony has started. We are doing the recognition. Boom, we're going. And so that's a very long time to be in the Abbey sitting down. So King Charles III wants to shorten the actual ceremony itself to around an hour, maybe a little over an hour. And of course, certain things are going to have to be shortened. Some things might actually be cut. There's already reports that the presentation of the gold ingots has already been cut and certain things will be shortened. I actually expect the homage to be shortened where people come up and read and proclaim and, you know, kiss the cheek and the hand and whatnot. I foresee that being shortened or maybe cut as well but that's just my own speculation other things that are changing about the king's coming coronation the attendance is going to be a lot smaller instead of around 8,000 9,000 people that were in attendance at Queen Elizabeth II's coronation it's looking like around 2,000 people will be in attendance those 2,000 people are, of course are the royal family themselves this is a big event so you know all hands on deck everybody's going to be there there's, of course, other foreign royal families. They're going to send representatives, typically like a little couple. Representatives of British government, Church of England, other uh, heads of states, like I can guarantee you, probably the president of the first or the first lady of the United States will be, go will be going over. Representatives of the Commonwealth will be there. It's essentially everybody in the world is coming together for this big landmark event because it is a very big, very big event. But... Not only that, but the peers will be in attendance. These big peers that we all know that gets dramatized a lot in film, they will be in attendance. So they're going to have to be very picky and very selective about who they invite and who they ask to attend. It is said that Charles is actually trying to make it so other parts of the Commonwealth don't have to be there if they don't want to be. And his big point is he doesn't want to overwhelm the airport with everybody coming in. So that's his big point. Additionally, the dress code is much more relaxed. So instead of what we saw with the Queen's coronation, where there's the coronets and the glittering tiaras and the official coronation gowns with their own robes with the peers and other members of parliament and the... Um, huge military uniforms and it was a huge big deal it was very glittering and glamorous the dress code is going to be cut back a little bit and I would say it will probably be the equivalent of the you know Sunday best where you, know, you look very professional if you have a military uniform you'll wear it you know women will be very conservative look very nice but ultimately the dress code is going to be more relaxed to reflect modern tastes so that right there very quickly is what we do know concretely for sure about Charles's coronation. The date, location, who's presiding over it, general gist of what's happening, and, you know, who's helping organize it. It was also said that His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales is going to be sort of like shadowing kind of in the background a little bit with the Duke of Norfolk as it's the coronation's officially being finished, planned, and carried out. Because, of course, he has his own coronation to look forward to. He has his own duties there. And we've discussed 
what is changing time frame being shorter dress codes different the crowd's going to be smaller what do people feel about this so first off is the date there was actually a lot of speculation about the date there were tweets going out that it was rumored to be june 3rd 2023 was to be when the king was going to be coronated as a way to subtly pay respects to his mother why did people think that well the queen was coronated june 2nd 1953 so having his coronation june 3rd 2023 it was a way to you know concretely end the elizabethan age and mark what new is going to be coming well that's clearly not happening may 6 2023 is the date there's also much more debate about the date so a lot of people are really angry because the date that they've selected is also Master Archie Harrison, Mountbatten Windsor's fourth birthday. Many people are speculating that this is a way that the king is making a subtle dig at the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, having his coronation on Archie's birthday. And this is another sign that things still aren't great between Harry, Meghan, and Charles. I take the side of... I guess I see you. I understand where that point's coming from. But also, May 6th is the anniversary of Princess Margaret and Lord Snowden's wedding anniversary. May is also the same time when George V ascended to the throne. And as we know, George V created the House of Windsor. And there's a lot of other big royal history events that happened in May that is a way that the king is paying tribute and honor Personally, I would think it's cool that my grandpa got coronated on my birthday. Like, that's a huge, it's for me, but I'm a 28-year-old, not a 4-year-old. So, I understand why people have issues over the date, but I think it's, that's something a little small. I think we're getting a little too out, <laughs> we're kind of going a little too crazy here. Um, but also, many people are saying that, hey, why is this happening on a weekend, You've said you want to be more inclusive to other religions, but now you have this on this date. Some religions, this conflicts with it, especially with uh, Jewish people, with you know, the idea of working on the Sabbath, having this big event on the Sabbath. So the date still has a lot of people touch and go, but that's sort of not become a, a big issue anymore. The next thing that's changing that people have opinions on is some of the text is changing. I haven't found concrete sources that say that this is true, but the rumor is, is, is instead of Charles saying that he is defender of the faith, meaning the Church of England, he wants to say he's defender of faith, meaning that he is now inclusive and recognizing different religions and different uh, viewpoints on religion and trying to be more inclusive and more sensitive to uh, other people. Well, some people go, hey, that's great, cool, we love you being more inclusive. But other people are going, um, no, that's not what the text is, it's not the original text, you're breaking with tradition. Either you're a defender of the Church of England or you're not, what are, what are you doing? The next and probably the biggest point that people have issues with the coronation right now is the idea of it being smaller, uh, less people in attendance, the glitz and glamour's gone, and this is where opinions are in two different camps the first camp is changing it to match the times we need to put our historical context hats on in terms of what was happening in 1953 and why queen elizabeth ii's coronation was so important and why it was deemed necessary to be this big huge pomp and circumstance ceremony post-world war ii rationing was just, just on the brink of being done We're still recovering and rebuilding from the blitz there's still a lot of exhaustion and just general anxiety something felt post world war ii the king that got us through world war ii who was this pillar of strength who against advice stayed in london at buckingham palace to be with his people who did what he could is gone and queen elizabeth when she was princess and duchess of edinburgh she was very well loved and they saw themselves in her she 
also did her time in the war effort. She was a mechanic. Britain was still feeling all these after effects. And so what could they do to help rally the people, re reunite the UK, put it back on the world stage going, hey, look, we're back. Then this coronation. And some of the dukedoms that were there don't exist anymore. Some of the titles have just died out simply because their laws of primogeniture and titles passing to the first to you know to the next son and through the male lines. If there's not a male to take it, then that title subsequently passes away. We're in a much different world now. And we're not in this peacetime rebuilding stage. We're now on the verge of something even probably equally as scary with things going on in the Ukraine right now. I know in the UK there's housing crisis, there's economic problems, there's issues over taxation. I know over here in America we're having just the similar issues where it seems like the idea of a big ceremony is now sort of seen as an annoyance rather than something that's going to uni unite the people. There's of course, as we've seen in engagements where people in Scotland and Northern Ireland sentiments of wanting to leave the UK and become their own independent countries are still there and gaining traction. So we're in a completely different world now where the the firm and the government and the people that are actively in it are seeing as we need to show that the monarchy is sensitive and reflective of the times, what the people are feeling. So when there's a huge economic crisis going on and a lot of unrest, a big overblown ceremony doesn't seem like it'd help anything. It'd probably alienate and make people more angry. It was, you know, this is, yes, it's a centuries old tradition. It is deeply rooted in pageantry. And when you think of British people and British culture, you think of how much they love and value tradition. It's a stereotype that gets made fun of a lot in media, but it's very true. And personally, I find it very endearing, and I very much appreciate how much they value tradition. But the flip side of the coin is one of the big critiques of the House of Windsor and the monarchy as a whole is seeing as old, antiquated, out of touch, and in some cases unnecessary. So if we have a big ceremony as big as what was there for Queen Elizabeth, what's it doing? It's going to reinforce those negative feelings. So changing it, updating it, shortening the ceremony. People forget it's still going to be an all-day event. There's the breakfast beforehand, the huge parade procession in, but also before the big one, everybody else has to process, process in. There's news coverage and the actual ceremony itself being an hour, but then everybody has to process out. Then the parade going back to Buckingham Palace, the then balcony, um, the balcony presentation with not only their majesties, the king and queen, but with their royal highnesses, the prince and princess of Wales, and their children, probably the princess royal, and the earl and countess of Wessex, and all other, just the core working royals up there on the balcony. So it's still going to be an all-day event. It's still going to be huge, and there's going to be celebrations. But changing it in the one camp, making it shorter, smaller, less formal is a way to show that the monarchy is trying to be in touch with what the people want, sensitive of what's happening in the world stage. But now the other side of the coin, this is a, this is a tradition. This is something where if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. People want to see the gowns and the robes of state with the coronets and a big tiara event where we can see tiaras and other jewels that we may not have seen before. I know the Dukedom of Fife having tiaras and jewels that are on loan to the national to the national collection. You know, will those be seen again? You know, seeing these peers all come together that we haven't seen in a huge, huge span of time. This tradition with its pomp and its ceremony and it's very serious and it's very uniquely British. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it, and we're going to do it right. And if this is a coronation, it's a coronation nonetheless. Either we pull out all the stops or we don't do it. Changing it and shortening it, many people have said it seems as dumbing it down. And some people on Twitter have said, if you don't understand the coronation, then it's honey, it's not for you. We don't need to dumb our traditions down for you. It's for us. It's unique. We don't like that it's being shortened. So there's this split where... 
the firm is trying to be modern, updated, trying to show that they're relevant and in touch with what the pe what's currently going on in the world. But then there are people that go, no, this is, again, tradition. It's who we are. It's what the ceremony is. Don't change it. Personally, I'm a little sad that we won't be seeing some of the tiaras and some or the glittering things, as you know, here on this channel. We really like discussing that because it's something that doesn't happen anymore because we as a society have changed to where those we really only see for state functions or weddings. The last bit of issue that could spiral and grow into either something bigger or it could just slowly fizzle out is some of the jewels that are going to be used. So the the famous Corinor diamond is currently in the crown of the consort. The Queen Mary had her own crown when she was crowned consort back in 1911 when the Queen Mother was to be coronated. She had her own crown made. And in this crown has the Corinor diamond, which has been in the possession of the of the royal family since the time of Queen Victoria. It was part of a peace treaty that from, I believe it's the Anglo... I forget the formal name of the actual wars that were going on between 1846 and 1847. And in the treaty that was signed, one of the things that was given over to the royal family was the Corinor Diamond. It was a part of the treaty. And... The history of the Corinor diamond is very bloody. It is a diamond that passed hands between many different Indian royal families. But now it's over here. It's in this crown. It is possibly being used again. <laughs> People have their opinions about it where no, we shouldn't use it. Take it out of the crown. Put something else in. Other people saying we don't really care. Many people are going it was stolen. But other going what if you look at the history it was a part of a treaty. Was it really stolen? I know some representatives from both sides have gone, it was part of a treaty, why are we so angry about it? Other people going, no, it's stolen, it's a sign of colonialism, we need to get rid of it, or you need to give it back. I don't fully know how to feel about it, but that is one where people are really angry. Camilla should wear a different type of diamond in there, but there's also the Cullinan diamond that is in a lot of some of the, a lot of the regalia for the coronation and especially in the scepter the you know cullinan one is in the scepter itself what are we going to do to take it out of course the cullinan diamond was found a part of cullinan diamond mines but it was over in africa and it was in you know, these african mines part of a colony it was found there then sent back so the cullinan diamond and the corinor diamond are the big gemstones that people have opinions on that people are frustrated about where there's two sides to to the camp Either it's not a colonialism, gave it back, move on. Or some of these were found as, and given as part of a treaty. They weren't stolen. Okay, move on. So that's one thing that we can't concretely officially say what they're going to do. They haven't officially reported. The biggest news thing that's happening right now regarding that is they're discussing. They're trying to be sensitive. Where They're trying to come up with a decision, whatnot. But those two particular diamonds, the Cullinan Diamond and the Corridor Diamond, those are the two that are up for debate. Personally, I don't really care specifically about those two, what the decision is to be made. That's something that I I don't I don't I don't know how I don't know how to feel. There's also, of course, drama over Harry and Meghan, because wh why would there not be drama or some type of things going on with them with something this serious where there's their book and Netflix docu historical docu-series type thing that they're doing. But then apparently word on the street is Charles has said to them, if you say anything bad about Camilla, you're banned from the coronation. They've already put it on Archie's birthday, but now we're over here with you're going to get banned. And everything seems to be the media loves to make mountains and molehills with them. If it's real, cool, great wow, that's kind of shitty. If it isn't real, okay, it's just a slow news day. But apparently Harry and Meghan are on the grounds of being barred from coming to the coronation, which whatever that means. I think it's just the media making something up, but that's just my own opinion. The last point I want to make 
circles back to feelings around changing it, making it shorter, smaller, and less formal. And the two examples I'm going to use of this are when King Wilhelm Alexander of the Netherlands and when King Felipe of Spain were eventually crowned. In the Netherlands, it was an more of an inauguration ceremony. As you can see, it was severely smaller. We the king isn't even crowned. He's just in a robe. The queen is in a tiara. Everybody's less formal. And there's not a lot of glitz. And... I think that's sort of the similar vibe that they're wanting to go for over here. But then over in Spain, we have where it's very small. Only about 150 people were there formally uh, outside of the government. And King Felipe just made a speech, posed for some pictures, and then moved on. Where that was in, this was in 2013, this was in 2014. It's now 2023. There really hasn't been any big inaugurations since i believe the grand ducal house of luxembourg had a switch of hands but even then it was it was small it wasn't a big deal it wasn't something well it is a big deal but it was something smaller it wasn't huge and this goes in line with the monarchies of europe are looking what can we do to stay relevant what can we do to still be here we need to change with the times we have two monarchies that have had not huge coronations, a basically an investiture ceremony and an inauguration that was very short. No, over in the Netherlands, there was around 2,000 people total. The taste of the world have changed. And we have two monarchies that reflect that. And I wouldn't be surprised if the king and the firm over in the UK are looking back to that going, these went well, these were great. Let's kind of borrow from them. You know, we have, of course, the still fallout with the Danish royal family and all that drama and people looking back going, hey, what's the UK going to do now? But now what do we what do we think? So we've talked about what is going to be concretely staying. We've talked about what is changing opinions about what's to be changing and possible inspiration from other royal houses. What do we now, we've now come to our conclusion part. We've looked at facts and opinions. What can we think? Personally, I have two thoughts. I appreciate that it's changing and I also don't like that it's changing. My not liking it changing is purely from a fashion standpoint. Of I was really wanting to see what they were going to wear, what the robes were going to look like, you know, the glitter of tiara and the jewels. It's purely cosmetic. It's purely superficial. It's nothing serious. It's a matter of, oh, I was really looking forward to it. Actually changing it. I completely understand. The Royal House of Windsor, the monarchy of the uk whether it being constitutional or absolute you know there was absolute then there was a civil war then they reinstated it with constitutional i appreciate that the firm is still reinventing itself it's showing that it's trying to listen it's showing that they understand that the monarchy is only as powerful and as relevant as the people that believe in it it's only there if people want it to be there. With all the animosity still here around King Charles and uh, Queen Camilla, I appreciate that they're doing like what Queen Mary did. No, Queen Mary is really was really instrumental in shaping still how the royal family is to this day. She knew all the way back in, you know, pre World War One that the monarchy needs to be seen. That people need to see them. People need to hear us. We need to be actually a part of their lives and now charles is again looking going we need to be a part of their lives so we need to be sensitive of the time we can't be demanding this huge ceremony hours long i understand it i respect it do i like it no i don't like to know the idea of changing tradition but ultimately it's not my decision to make ultimately we'll just have to see how how, how it plays out this is you know what we know at this time when this goes out things could change again and all of a sudden we're back to formal four hours long we're doing the whole shebang and cool great awesome 
but I, I don't see that happening. Charles is trying to be politically conscious. He's trying to be economically conscious. He's trying to be environmentally conscious. And he's always been that way, which is where he got a lot of critiques early on in his uh, tenure as Prince of Wales, especially in the 70s when he's being so economically conscious and people didn't like that. But I think it will, people don't like it now, but it'll still be a beautiful ceremony, very relevant, very serious. It's still going to have that power and pow that it had even back with the queen, but it's just going to look different. You know, we're in the middle of this huge transition. The world's changing. And, you know, some things need to change with it too. But we've come to the end of this big podcast discussing what we know, what's changing, and opinions about it. Let me know down below, again, do you think they will replace the corn or diamond after all? Will they leave it? Or will they keep it? Leaving it in, will it cause this big political unrest that they think is going to happen? Or will it just kind of be fine and it'll just kind of fall under the radar? Let me know down below. But everyone, we've come to the end of today's podcast. Get ready as The Crown Season 5 is coming out. We have content coming out on Friday with the trailer dropping. So just get excited. We have more stuff with The Crown and also possibly investigating and researching what the hell's going on with Lord Mountbatten. Lord Louis Mountbatten, specifically Uncle Dickie. What's going on there? But with that, everyone, have a great rest of your day. All my sources are down in the show notes or in the description box down below. And I will see you in the next one.